we need to establish this from the door. That Melchizedek that met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the kings was not Jesus Christ. The mystery of Melchizedek and who he was and what was the business of Melchizedek and why it is important in your life and why is Christ made a high priest after the order of Melchizedek. We need to establish this from the door. That Melchizedek that met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the kings was not Jesus Christ. Period. Melchizedek that met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the kings, it tells you if how hearest thou, how readest thou, it tells you he was a priest. Christ is the high priest. He was made like unto the Son of God. He is not the Son of God. How hearest thou? But the similarity, the similitude is important. Because what did he do? When he, he met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the kings and he blessed him. He blessed him that had the promises because Melchizedek was sent to bless him that had the promises. So Melchizedek came out of heaven. He was an angel that came out of heaven to bless Abraham. So we can be clear. Just like the angel came out of heaven and blessed Jacob and his name went from um, Jacob to Israel because the blessing, the ministry, the priesthood came out of heaven. So we can understand it carefully. That Melchizedek was an angel that came out of heaven. He was not Shem. He said he was without father and without mother and without descent. So he had no earthly descent. He had no earthly lineage, so we can understand and be clear. He came out of heaven because God is showing you the blessing of Abraham came out of heaven. Okay, he was priest, king of, being by interpretation, king of righteous, that is king of peace. Because what must be understood, that Christ was sent after that same order. What was the order? Who gave the order? God gave the order. He said, the Father has given me a commandment, what I should say and what I should speak, and his commandment is life everlasting. God sent the Lord Jesus Christ to give the blessing, to bless them that had the promises. And you, brothers and sisters, Israel didn't understand the things that belonged to their peace, that Jesus Christ, the Lord, was sent out of heaven to bless Israel that had the promises. And what did they do? They rejected him. They denied their own blessing. In the book of Acts, chapter 3, we can look at it right here. Acts chapter 3, because what Christ Jesus our Lord came to do is summed up here. Acts 3, verse 25. And ye are the children of the prophets and of the covenant which God made with our fathers, saying unto Abraham, And in thy seed shall all the kindreds of the earth be blessed, showing you that when Christ Jesus came, when the high priest came after the order of Melchizedek, he was going to be a blessing to all mankind. That he was going to remove the curse that was Israel came unto under the law. And he was going to remove the curse that Adam stepped into for eating of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. That he was going to be the redeemer. So we can be clear. Unto you first. See, it's showing you that it was a first order business. Unto you first, God having raised up his son, Jesus, sent him to bless you in turning away every one of you from his iniquities. So what must be understood? Unto you first, God having raised up his son, resurrected his son, Jesus, sent him. See, what was the purpose of Christ? He came to bless you. He came for you to be partakers of what? The divine nature. He came for this mortal to put on immortality. He came to reconcile you to God and for you to have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ to open up a door, a way into the holiest of all. Grace and peace, brothers and sisters. Grace and peace to all the believers. Grace and peace to those of you that are looking into the future. Looking into the will and the word of God for answers, for transformation, for victory, for success, for the strategies that God showed you how to war a better warfare and had good and blessed and successful outcomes in life. When God is telling you to walk in the fruits of the Spirit, He's showing you how to have a successful outcome in life. 
When he says overcome evil with good, he's telling you how to have a successful outcome in life. He's showing you that when you add to faith virtue and deal with moral excellence, that's how you're going to have a successful outcome in life. Tonight, brothers and sisters, we need to talk about Melchizedek. We opened up before about the forerunner. That the forerunners entered in for us, even Jesus, made an high priest after the order of Melchizedek. We spoke briefly also about Melchizedek had blessed him that had the promises. But now we're going to open it up by the grace of the Lord Jesus. And I'm going to share with you, brothers and sisters, what the Lord revealed to me to share with the saints. Because the understanding of Melchizedek is important for you to have a firm grasp upon because God introduces Melchizedek after he shows you about the high priest. After we read in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 13. Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight. So the Lord sees everybody's sickness. So nobody got to pretend. He sees the full circumstance. And so you don't got to be ashamed about what state that you're in. The point is that you're coming to the physician. And that he is able to heal and to give where it needeth. But all things are naked and open unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. Seeing then we have in a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession as believers. So let's deal with this right now. Um, Hebrews chapter 7, verse 1. For this Melchizedek, king of Salem, priest, king of Salem, Priest of the Most High God. You listening carefully? Because saints, we got to listen to what is being explained. If we want to learn, we have to have an attentive ear. We have to concentrate. We have to absorb into our mind. We have to let the scriptures correct the way that we thought. We have to let the scriptures give us the answers. We have to let the light reprove our personal darkness. We have to let the pillar and ground of truth destroy lies and false teachings and cast down imaginations. For this Melchizedek, king of Salem, priest of the Most High God, who met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the kings and blessed him, to whom Abraham gave a tenth part of all. First being by interpretation king of righteousness, and after that also King of Salem, which is King of Peace. I need to establish something first. So I'm reading on. Without father, without mother, without descent. Having neither beginning of days nor end of life, but made like unto the Son of God. He was not the Son of God. He was made like unto the Son of God. He had neither beginning of days nor end of life, and he was out decent, without father, without mother, without descent, having neither beginning of days nor end of life, but made like unto the Son of God. So Melchizedek, when he came into the earth, because Melchizedek was an angel, that's why he was without with father and without mother and without descent. He didn't have no lineage. He was not Shem. He was without father, without mother, without descent. So we can be clear. It says having now the beginning of days. He didn't have a birthday. He didn't have no beginning of days upon the earth. He don't have. And what it says. Nor having now the beginning. Nor end of life. Because he was an angel. Be clear. But made like unto the son of God. Abideth a priest continually. Meaning Melchizedek is still a priest right now. In heaven. He's still a priest. It said he abides a priest continually. So but how could Melchizedek be back there 1,800 years before Christ, 3,800 years approximately from today, and he still be a priest? Because the angels are priests, man, before God. So we can be clear. Revelation knowledge. Without father, without mother, without descent, having neither beginning of days nor end of life, but made like unto the Son of God, abideth a priest continually. But now consider how great this man was. He said, but he was a man. Um, when the angel came and healed Tobit, 
Remember he was with Tobit's son? Raphael. It was a man. Yeah, because they could put on the appearance of a man. When Jacob wrestled with a man, he was really wrestling with an angel, but it looked like a man, but then he realized it was an angel because they can put on those appearances. When the two angels went to Lot's house to deliver him, it looked like a man. They wanted to give us those two men so they could abuse them so the angels can put on the appearance of a man. So we can be clear. What did the angel do? The angel, the angel blessed Jacob just like the angel blessed Abraham. So we can understand because the blessing is coming out of heaven. Without father, without mother, without descent. So we can be clear. <laughs> like Raphael, he didn't have no father or no mother. Yeah. He had no descent, no lineage you could trace. Let's read, he abides a priest continually. Now consider how great this man was unto whom even the patriarch Abraham gave the tenth part of the spoils. And verily, they that are the sons of Levi who received the office of the priesthood have a commandment to take tithes of the people according to the law, that is, of their brethren, though they come out of the loins of Abraham. So, the Levites took tithes of the people. That is of their brethren. Okay. Since we're walking. All right, let's walk. We got to pull up something here. In the book of Revelation. Chapter 19, verse 9. And he said unto me, Right, blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said unto me, These are the true sayings of God. And I fell at his feet to worship him. He fell at the feet of the angel to worship him. Okay, let's read on. And he said unto me, See, thou do it not. I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren. Did you hear that? The angel told John he was his brother. Yes. The angel told John he was his brother. That have the testimony of Jesus, worship God, for the testimony of Jesus is a spirit of prophecy. So you can understand the angels are only holding the testimony of Jesus. That's it. They're not dealing with the old covenant. They're holding the testimony of Jesus. Revelation 14, it says the angels had the everlasting gospel to preach to all nations. That's what they're holding. But the angel said he was his brother. But his brother that was a, his brother, angel, was ministering to John and revealing to him. Now let's go back. The Levites had a commandment. The Levites, who received the office of the priesthood, have a commandment to take tithes of the people according to the law that is of their brethren. So as the Levites took tithes of the people, that is of their brethren, Melchizedek took tithes of Abraham. <laughs> Can you see it? <laughs> that was the angel, that was his brother. Can you see it? In the heavenly realm. That's what God told Israel, you are not of this world. Can we deal with the truth? Can we deal with it? He said, I have many things to say unto you, but, but you cannot bear them now. See, you are dull of hearing. But it's time for us to open up our ears and listen. Without father, without mother, without descent. Having neither beginning of days nor end of life, but made like unto the Son of God, abideth a priest continually. Many he's Melchizedek was still a priest back then, 1800 years after he appeared to Abraham. How could you be a priest for 1,800 years? Go ahead. <laughs> the angels are priests to God. All right, now let's move on. But he whose descent is not counted from them received tithes of Abraham and blessed him that had the promises. So he whose descent was not counted from what? From Aaron's seed, from the Levites. He blessed him that had the promises because it's leading you up into the comprehension of the sum of the matter that the sum of the matter is a summary of the chief points and the description of the most important information. See, the most important information is what it says, like right here in Romans chapter 15, verse 8. Now I say that Jesus Christ was a minister of the circumcision for the truth of God 
to confirm the promises made unto the fathers. So Jesus Christ was a minister. Yeah, he was a minister of the truth of God and a minister of the century and the high priest and the bishop and the apostle to confirm, to settle the questions concerning the promises that was made to the fathers. Because Israel are the, you Israelites are the children of promise. But are you taking the promise of the Spirit and stepping into the promised mannerisms, the promised divine nature, the promised love, the promised washing, and we just, you, can you put away the bitterness? God said, let go from your bitterness. Stop behaving like you're defeated. Stop wearing the wounds of being mistreated. And live the risen Christ. Live the risen Savior. Live the risen glory. Live it. Christ told the disciples, why do you walk and you're sad after Christ was crucified? Or not Christ have to suffer these things and to enter into his glory? Did not you have to suffer these things to enter into your glory? Did you not have to be chastised and corrected for your disobedience? And then be reformed? Do you not have to accept of the punishment in order to be redeemed and be brought back into the blessings, Israel? Don't you have to suffer for it? It's as if you suffer for your faults. Happy are you. You got you to you suffer for your faults. Because no chastisement for the present seemeth to be joyous but grievous, but afterwards it yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness. I mean, it's about the fruit of righteousness being formed, about being what? Coming to a more advanced state. The action of the forerunner was for us to come to a more advanced state. The advanced state is the love that is unfeigned. The advanced state is a divine nature. The advanced state is a spirit of forgiveness. The advanced state is a spirit of forbearance and long-suffering and gentleness and goodness to live the life of God's name. Because when God changed Jacob's name to Israel, it was for them to come into the more advanced divine state because he was imparting his spirit. That's where the change begins. In the imparting of the spirit. But wait a minute. Yeah, we're going to go back. But he who is decent is not counted from them, received tithes of Abraham, and blessed him that had the promises. And without all contradiction, the less is blessed of the better. So Abraham was the less that was blessed of the better that was what? The angel. That was what? Melchizedek. Okay, so we can be clear. And here men that die receive tithes, but there he received them of whom it is witness that he liveth. It is a witness that Melchizedek was still alive in that day when this book was written. It was witness that Melchizedek liveth. But where is he living? Hmm. Could the angels live? They live on and on. They don't have no end of life. <laughs> Meaning they're not subject to death. Those that sinned of the children of Adam were subject to death. They're not subject to death. Mm -mm. So much other is yet alive. Revelation knowledge. See, some brothers read over their scriptures, and it's not good. If you don't understand it, don't teach it. If you don't have the revelation to make it clear and plain, don't teach it yet. Wait till God gives you the utterance and the insight. Only speak according to the measure of the gift of faith. So you can show the corresponding facts. We're going to go into the corresponding facts. As the angel Melchizedek blessed Abraham, even so the Lord sent Jesus Christ to bless the children of Abraham. Do you understand now? I mean, the blessing came out of heaven. Acts chapter 3. Verse 26. Unto you first, God having raised up his son Jesus, sent him to bless you. So the objective that Christ came to do with Israel is to bless them. I didn't come to condemn the world. He said, I came that the world through me might be saved. He came to bless us. And in blessing us is telling us, bring forth fruits, meat for repentance. He didn't have two coats, let him impart to him, have none. Become the loving, caring, sharing, believing people again. Turn the hearts. The hearts of the fathers must be turned to the children. You fathers, you got to care for your children. They taught in these camps, man, to abandon your children. Can you believe what scriptures were they using? Talking about they soldiers. No, you're not. No, you're not. What did God say? And I was under that false teaching. 
God said, I know Abraham. He will command his house after me and his children. Did Abraham abandon Isaac? What kind of lies were these brothers? They were deceived. Meaning what? They did not learn Christ. Mm -mm. If scriptures tell you to bring up your children in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord, it don't say abandon your children. It don't say stop nurturing your children. Why? Because no man ever hated his own flesh. Your children are your own flesh. Yes, we know the complication of this system of how they used and pitted the men against the women because of the poverty and gave more opportunities to the females than to the men. We know all about that. God knows the condition of the battle. But we more than conquerors to God that love us. We can more than conquer, brothers. We can step up. We can come before the throne of grace to obtain mercy to find grace to help in time of need. And what we can't supply, let the Lord supply. <laughs> Victory talk. Victory walk. <laughs> Victory life. The high priest. And without all contradiction, less is best of the better. And here men that die receive tithes. But here he received them of whom it is witness that he liveth. And as I may so say, Levi also which received tithes paid tithes in Abraham. For he was yet in the loins of his father when Melchizedek met him. If therefore perfection were by the Levitical priesthood, for under it the people received the law, what further need was there that another priest should rise after the order of Melchizedek and not be called after the order of Aaron for the priesthood being changed? There is made of necessity a change also of the law. So the whole entire ordinances of divine service was changed, all of it. It was changed. Now, many men don't respect the forerunner, but they don't understand Christ is the ultimate authority. And they're going to they be caught. The word that Christ spoke, that same word going to judge man in the last day. Jerusalem was burned up. Christ said, oh, Jerusalem, mm -mm, not this mistake, that killest the prophets and stonest them that were sent unto thee. If thou hadst known, even in this, this thy day, the things that belong unto thy peace, but now they are hid from thine eyes. That was Luke 19, 42. For the day shall, 43, the day shall come upon thee that thine enemy shall cast a trench about thee and compass thee round about and keep thee in on every side and shall lay thee even to the ground and thy children within thee and they shall not leave in thee one stone upon another because, not the Mosaic Covenant, not because of Sabbath days, not because of new moons, because Thou knewest not the time of thy visitation because they didn't acknowledge Jesus Christ as Lord. They didn't step into the new covenant. They didn't believe the gospel and that's why the wrath came upon the nation. So if the fall of Jerusalem came because they did not know the time of their visitation, what man is supposed to know is the time of visitation now? The visitation is that Christ came to visit you to give you a gift. The wage of sin is death, as it says in Romans chapter 6. But the wage of sin is death, but the gift of God. But the gift, the gift, the gift, the gift. Romans 6, 23. For the wage of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. They did not believe the teaching of Jesus Christ was eternal life. And the whole city of Jerusalem was destroyed. And God said he would miserably burn up those wicked men. They will call them wicked men, although they kept the Sabbath day. They will call wicked men, although they kept the new moons. They will call wicked men, although they were reading the Torah, because they were wicked, because they didn't bear no fruit. Christ said, these three years I've come to find fruit on this tree, and I found no fruit. Where was the love? Where was the faith? Where was the love for God? Where was the love for his son? Where was the love for the New Testament? Where was the love for the will of God? Where was the love for the understanding? Where was the love for what God is doing from his whole heart and his whole soul? Where was the love for the Father, what he was doing? God said they chose their own ways. And their soul delighted if it was what now? Now the feast days is a, what an abomination. As it says in Isaiah. Who have required this? Because God is not requiring that anymore. That's long been what? Disannulled. That's long been what? Cast away. That's long been what? Abolished. That's long been what? Ceased to be recognized by God. That's what he said. 
Who you gonna believe? All right. For the priesthood being changed is made of necessity a change also of the law. For he of whom these things are spoken pertaineth to another tribe of which no man gave attendance at the altar. So now the conversation is switching to the high priest. Now the conversation is speaking to him that is made a high priest after the order of Melchizedek, not after the order of Aaron. But from verse 1 all the way down here is telling you about Melchizedek. Now let's check something real quick. Genesis chapter 14 verse 18. Is that he blessed him that had the promises. Can we look at this? The similitude. Made like unto the son of God. So Melchizedek was a priest after the order of Melchizedek. After the order of king of righteousness and king of priests. So Christ is the high priest after the same order. So Melchizedek was not... Melchizedek that met Abraham was not a high priest. He was a priest. Are we listening? Are we hearing? Okay. Let's move on. So we can consider. It says now consider. Because God wants us to consider. Let this go through our mind. Now. Genesis 14. Verse 18. And Melchizedek king of Salem brought forth bread and wine and he was the priest of the most high God and he blessed him and said blessed be Abraham of the most high possessor of heaven and earth and blessed be the most high which have delivered thine enemies into thy hand and he gave him tides of war but there's some there's a mystery right here Abraham gave Melchizedek tides of all but can we check something? Verse 18. And Melchizedek king of Salem brought forth bread and wine. Remember it says he was made like unto the son of God. He was a similitude of him that was to come. So can we look at it? He brought forth bread and wine. You see it in our saints? Alright, good. Now let's go to John chapter 6 verse 51. Now, the priest after the order of Melchizedek brought forth bread and wine. Now, the high priest, he brought forth bread and wine also. He brought forth bread and wine to what? To them that had the promises. John 6. 51. Here we go. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread... That I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. So, Jesus Christ, the high priest, after the order of Melchizedek. So, the order of Melchizedek is, is simply edifying that God commanded that you be blessed. He commanded that you be saved. He commanded that you be redeemed. He, it, came, it came as an order from the Father on high. So, we can understand. King of righteousness. King of peace. The state that you find them in, just bless them. Don't go to, don't call, Christ, I'm not come to condemn the world. I came that the world through me might be saved. Just bless them. But it says, this is the condemnation. That light is coming to the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. So man comes into the condemnation if he rejects the blessing. How are you going to reject the blessing that came out of heaven? Come on. How are you going to reject the blessing of eternal life? How are you going to reject the blessing of immortality, transformation, washing, renewing, regeneration? Because that's the blessing. Okay. So, the priest of the Most High God, Melchizedek, he brought forth bread and wine. Now, the high priest, he also brought forth bread and wine. Here we go. The Jews therefore strove among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Then Jesus said unto them, Verily I say unto you, Except you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. So showing you there was an advancement in the knowledge of the learning of God, that you had to eat Christ's flesh in order to gain the life in you. Because that's where God was going to revive you and quicken you. You had to believe what he said in order to get the, the life put in you. 
He said, the hour cometh and now is when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God and they that hear, they that believe what he said, they that hear and heed it shall live. Because they were dead. That's why it says in Baruch, hear not a prayer of the dead Israelites. They were keeping Sabbath days and new moons and going to camp and teaching the people, but they were dead. That's why I said, you have he quickened who was dead in sins and in trespasses. Because if you outside the love of God and the love of the Father and the love of Christ and the love of the gospel, you're dead. That's why it says you are passed from death unto life because you love the brethren. You have to come into the love in order to be alive. Because the kingdom of heaven, the reviving is a resurrection to love. See, this is about the resurrection to love. The resurrection to joy. The resurrection to affection is a resurrection to the divine nature. Jesus said unto them, Verily I say unto you, except you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, ye have no life in you. Whosoever eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath eternal life. So you're talking about the high priest came now, not only to bless us that have the promises, but to give us eternal life. So um, what did Abraham get? Oh yeah, he got it too. That's why it says, God is not the God of the dead, but of the living. Why? Because Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, they stepped into the realm of eternal life because they believed God when he spoke in their generation. They did not come into the eternal life because of Sabbath days or new moons or circumcision. They stepped into the eternal life and the transformation because they believed God's voice. In Deuteronomy it says, if you will not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, these curses shall cleave unto thee and overtake you. Now, the voice of the Son of God, the voice of God is not the old covenant, the voice is hear ye him. That's what a transfiguration showed you. Moses, Elijah, and Jesus. And God said, this is my beloved son. This is my beloved son. Hear ye him. I mean, this is how you're going to be resurrected. He'd have ears to hear. Let him hear. All right, let's read on. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me, and I in him. This had nothing to do with Sabbath days or new moons. There's no mention of rituals here. Yeah. This is about living in the divine nature. This is about actually being upright. This is about actually having integrity. This is actually putting off the old man and putting on the new man. It's about being zealous unto good works. This is about mortifying the deeds of the flesh. Letting go anger. Letting go wrath. Letting go deceit. Letting go heresies. This is about actually living in Christ. Hear what it says here. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me and I in him. Showing you the diet. The diet of the abiding. See, the gospel is the diet of the abiding in Christ. For as the living Father hath sent me and I live by the Father, so he that eateth me, even he shall live by me. So if you eat Christ's teaching, if you absorb it into your mind and absorb it into your thinking, if you deal with his bread that came down from heaven, he said, Moses gave you not that bread. He's the bread. No. Similitudes. This is the bread which came down from heaven, not as your fathers did eat manna and are dead. He that eateth of this bread shall live forever. These things said he in the synagogue as he taught in Capernaum. Many, he didn't teach a Torah in the synagogue. He taught the gospel of the kingdom of heaven. He didn't teach a return to Torah. No. What are they going to say? Well, Matthew 23 said, The scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. And what have they bid you observe? That was only until Christ was crucified. After that, the New Testament was in full effect. That's why you got to pay attention. That's why you got to increase in knowledge. That's why you got to drink all of it. That's why you got to see the succession of the events. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. And after Christ's crucifixion, you see his ascension into heaven. And then you see the acts of the apostles. And then you see the Gentiles being called into the salvation. Then you see the establishing of the churches of Jesus Christ amongst the Gentiles and amongst the Jews that were part of the diaspora. And then you see the correction and the admonition of the churches, the nurturing of the churches. Then you see the dispute and the heretics and the false brethren trying to bring the people back to the old covenant. And then you see that they were being reproved by Paul and being reproved by the apostles. And then you see the edification and the sum of the knowledge in the book of Hebrews. 
there's a succession of the events. You don't see in the beginning God created heaven and earth in Deuteronomy. It's in Genesis. There's a succession of the events to build you up so that the understanding light can be formed in you so you can understand everything from the very first. So in 1 John when it says um, the commandments are not grievous, it's not talking about Mosaic commandments or Sabbath days and new moons. It's talking about the commandments that Christ gave in the gospel. He that have ears to hear, let him hear. It's very plain. 1 John 5 is after it was settled in Galatians about circumcision. Come on. It was settled already about the tithing. There is no more tithing because of the Levites, that whole priesthood was disannulled. So when Christ said that he was the bread, what happened? They said this is a hard saying. Many therefore of his disciples when they heard this said this is a hard saying, who can hear it? Why? Because Christ was, what was happening when Christ taught? He laid in Zion for a foundation, a new stone. It was a whole new and living way. And they were sottish. They were kept, they said the old wine is better. They said, no, that's it. So people you hear and you speak to them, they hear about the gospel, but they can only go but so far in the gospel of Christ. They can't come into the deep reverence because they think that something is more profound than the king. Something is more glorious than the high priest. Something is more glorious than the forerunner. Something is more glory than, glorious than the majesty of Christ. They're all deceived. This is the living word that came down from heaven. The ultimate authority has spoken. That's why he said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, because he's the ultimate authority according to the will of God the Father. God gave him a command and what he should say. So now let's go back. Here. So we showed that he was the bread. Okay, can we over, step over here? In Luke chapter 5 now. Can we show that he's the wine? That he brought forth bread and wine also. <laughs> Luke chapter 5, 37. And no man put if new wine into old bottles, else the new wine will burst the bottles and be spilled, and the bottles shall perish. But new wine must be put into new bottles, and both are preserved. No man also having drunk old wine straightway desireth new, for he saith the old is better. So many men will draw back to perdition and say the old covenant way is better. See, God knows all about was declaring the ending in the beginning. He knew he was going to be rejected of the scribes and the chief priests. He already knew that. But he still brought the new wine. Luke 22, 19. Yeah, Melchizedek, the priest brought what bread and wine. Did the high priest do that? Oh, yes, he did. And he took the bread, Luke 22, 19, and he took bread and gave thanks. There we go. And break it and gave it unto them, saying, This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. Did you go to bread? Okay. Likewise also the cup after supper saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood which is shed for you. So Christ is showing them at the Last Supper they were dealing with bread and wine. So the high priest also brought forth bread and wine. But his bread and wine will give you what? Eternal life. Now let's go back now. <laughs> Psalms 110. Let's move through this. It said he blessed him that had the promises. Psalms 110 verse 1. The Lord said unto my Lord, sit thou at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. Because everyone that's an enemy to love is going to be made the footstool. That's an enemy to mercy going to be made the footstool. That's an enemy to forgiveness and kindness and justice and peace and equity and compassion going to be made the footstool of love. Bam. Going to be put down. The Lord shall send the rod of thy strength out of Zion. Rule thou in the midst of thine enemies. The, thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power. In the beauties of holiness. Because the high priest is about the beauties of holiness. From the womb of the morning thou hast the dew of thy youth. The Lord hath sworn and will not repent. Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. So it was testified to David, he saw it. He saw the commanding of the blessing coming into the nation. He saw that God was going to look upon their condition and bless them nevertheless. Now, do you receive the blessing? 
And are you walking in the steps of the faith of the blessing? Because when Abraham received the blessing, he walked in the steps of the faith of the blessing. So here it is. Romans chapter 4, 20. He staggered not at the promises of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God, and being fully persuaded what he had promised he was able to perform. And therefore it was imputed to him for righteousness. Now, it was not imputed for his sake alone that it was imputed to him, but for us also to whom it shall be imputed if we believe. It shall be imputed if we believe. On him that raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was delivered for our offenses and raised again for our justification. So Christ was delivered for our offenses and raised again for our justification. For our offenses under what? The old covenant. So if you build again that which you destroyed, you make yourself a transgressor. He was delivered for our offenses. Romans 4.12, And the father of circumcision to them who are not of the circumcision only, but who also walk in the steps of that faith of our father Abraham, which he had being yet uncircumcised. So Christ is showing you that Abraham was walking in the steps of the faith of the consciousness of God, although he was not in the covenant of Mount Sinai. He was not, in the, he was not circumcised. Showing you that circumcision availeth nothing, nor uncircumcision. In the new covenant, it's talking about a new creature. So to walk in the steps of the faith I means you got to believe that God is going to be good to you and a blessing to you, you in your life. Just walk in the operation of the royal law, of the princehood, of the dignity who God is. Take that character into your being. See, idolatry has a tension and righteousness has a peace. Take the peace into you. Now, Hebrews chapter 9, verse 10. The old covenant which stood only in meats and drinks and diverse washings and carnal ordinances imposed upon them until the time of reformation. So the high priest is showing you because, remember, Hebrews 9 is after the summation. The summation is the chief points and giving you the most important part and the final part of the series of statements of facts to establish what God has decided and concluded and to showing you the final decision and the judgments. That's what the summation does. When a judge gives, a, we have to read in Hebrews 8, it said, of the things which you have spoken, this is the sum, it's giving you a sum, meaning it's showing you judgment. Is showing you final decision. That's why I said we, we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the Mosaic law, without the Sabbath days, the new moons, the calling of assembly. He's justified by faith, meaning if he acts in accordance with the teachings of the gospel of Christ, then he's justified. If he walks in the love, he's fulfilled the whole law. That is what the apostles concluded. Ain't nobody on this earth above that judgment. Because they speaking what the high priest concluded to them. Christ gave them the judgment. Okay. Now, we can go back to Hebrews 7. So we see in Melchizedek the consolidation of the power of the king and priest. So you can see the idea of rulers. Let me read this here. About the forerunner. The blessing of the forerunner, Jesus Christ made in high priest after the order of Melchizedek. In the revealing of Jesus Christ as high priest, you see a consolidation of the power. The king represents he that should be obeyed and followed. He's a symbol and a sign of the direction and the will of God and a guide into the blessings of the heavenly father. So, showing you that Christ being king, he's a guide and a representation and are directing you into the blessings of the Heavenly Father. Now let's go. The kings shows the rulership of God on earth and shows the express image of God. Now we out of the shadow, now we into the very image of the thing. Jesus Christ our Lord has come. 
once the king is anointed and appointed, the people have clear insight into what they have to do and who they have to obey. So when it says it was a division among the people because of him, there should have been no division. When it says all the people came up to make David king, then everybody should have came up to make Christ king. But what happened? Men got caught up in the vanity of themselves, in the pride of this life, into the deceitfulness of riches. And what happened? They rejected Christ to maintain some authority that they never had in the first place. So even in these camps and what happened in one west, they were selling the priesthood, man. Meaning this, the hot, if you gave a lot of money, you had high standing with, with the elders. All wickedness, all darkness, those were the old sins. That was not after Christ. Simony, same thing the Roman Catholics did, selling the priesthood. So when God saw the sins of the kings and the sins of the priests, God said, oh no, mm -mm. I'm ascending the Holy One. I'm ascending the King of Kings. That's why David said in Psalm 72, give the king thy judgments, O God, and thy righteousness unto the king's son. He shall judge the people with righteousness and the mountain shall bring peace to the people. David looked for the settlement of all the domestic problems in Israel. He looked to the king. So when Christ came, he should have settled everything. He shall judge, Psalm 72. Give the king thy judgments, O God, and thy righteousness unto the king's son. He shall judge thy people with righteousness and thy poor with judgment. See, you poor, but we, we poor, we still God's people. Meaning you, we, we poor, but guess what? We waiting on riches. <laughs> See, we poor, but we're waiting on riches. Hath not God chosen the poor of this world? What does it say? Rich in faith. We're waiting on riches. So we ain't got to steal. We're not desperate. We're waiting on riches. Blessed are the poor. Theirs is the kingdom. We're waiting on the riches. We're waiting on blessings. We're waiting on favor. We're waiting on grace. We're waiting for God to shower us with blessings. We're waiting on riches. Yeah. God made Jacob rich in his travail because he was waiting on riches. He was waiting for the love of God, the blessing to manifest. We're waiting on riches. So going into the New Year, saints, you know you're waiting on riches. Going into the New Year, saints, you know you are waiting on riches. He shall judge. The mountain shall bring peace to the people and the little hills by righteousness. He shall judge the poor of the people. He shall save the children of the needy and shall break in pieces the oppressor. Because God hates people that intimidate other people. He hates them. Yeah. He's going to break in pieces the oppressor. He hates evil. And oppressors are evil. Why would you do that to somebody? You don't want nobody to intimidate you, but you intimidate other people. Why are you doing that? You don't want no one to belittle you, but you belittle other people. Why are you doing that? You don't want no one to insult you, but you insult other people. Why do you do that? You don't want no one to crush you and to take all the fruit of your labor. Why are you doing that? He shall break in pieces the oppressor. Then it says here, verse 13, verse 12. He shall deliver the needy when he crieth, the poor also and him that hath no helper. So even when you don't have no helper, remember the king. If no one want to hear your cry, remember the king. It says he it don't tell you anybody else. It says he. So you can, for example, can you call 711 and get emergency services? 811. No, you can't. For you to get emergency services, what you got to call? 911. And in some cities, you got to call 911 or 311. But you have to make the right call in order to get the emergency services. So Christ said, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord Jesus shall be saved because his business is salvation. Okay. He shall spare the poor and needy and shall save the souls of the needy. He shall redeem their souls from deceit and violence and precious shall their blood be in his sight. So he's redeeming the soul from deceit and violence. Can any king do that? Show me the king that can do it. No one can do that. That's why we're looking at Jesus. Looking unto Jesus. Now, 
the, the king represents the consolidation of the power. The influence and the authority into one central person. That's what Melchizedek shows. Because it was power and influence that existed between the king and the power that existed and the influence between the priests. In the kingship, what man saw was a heavenly finger, a chosen vessel, sanctified, separated from personal selfish interests, a defender, a deliverer, and a protector. So what we see in Christ is a defender, a deliverer, and a protector. That's what the king was supposed to represent. A defender, a deliverer, a protector, a ruler. One that would reflect the heavenly image of God. Not dealing with selfish interests. And dedicated only to the will of God's blessing and love of God in Israel. A king was to represent the heavenly judgment and the care of God over the people. For it is written, a wise king is the upholding of the people. That was the service of God to be a benefit to the people. The king's service was to be a benefit to the people. That's what God said, you should not multiply chariots. You should not multiply horses. You should not multiply wives. Why? Because it's going to distract you from the business of loving your people. And showing the will of God in the earth. The king was to be the commander and the defender to deal with all enemies, domestic and foreign. Because there were people in Israel and out of Israel that were enemies to the blessings and the will of God. They don't want to see you happy. They don't want to see you as glorious. They want to, they want to determine what level you're on. They want to determine how prosperous you are. They want to determine how much knowledge you have. No, 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 no. The king is there to defend and to uphold and to support the will of God in your life. He's supporting you. He's a commander and a defender to deal with all the enemies of the blessings of God. Because a father chose Israel to be the first fruits and the recipients of his divine love. That would then go forth and provoke the admiration of God. By all other nations that would visualize Israel as the first beneficiaries. Of being a covenant people that God set his love upon. That's what God wanted Israel to be. The first fruits. So people would admire God because of the blessings that you're living in. Now let's move on. That's why the king could not multiply wives. Because his life was a living sacrifice for the whole benefit of the people. A similitude of Christ. Christ Jesus, our Lord show that the chief objective of the king was what? To live for the people. To show the will of God and to show the benefit of God and to deal with the providence of God upon the people. So that the peace of God would be in the people's lives and in their families and in their brethren. Thus manifesting the will of God in the priests. The priest was a gift of God to the people. Their whole life was a gift. Sacrifice. So the king was a sacrifice and the priest was a sacrifice. So we see the unification and the consolidation of the power in king and priest. When in Christ Jesus being a high priest after the order of Melchizedek, you see in this one central power now. You see in the real central command. Not a fake central command. You see in a real central command where everything is done for the benefit of the people and the sacrificing. Of the servants is only for the benefit of the people. So the people would see the will and the blessing of God in their life. The king did not come to be ministered unto but to minister. And to give his life a ransom for many. That's what it means to be a king after the order of Melchizedek. Thus manifesting the will of God. Demonstrating the love of God. The priest was a teacher anointed from heaven. In a dark, confused world to give light and understanding to those who inquired of the will of God. The Father, creator of heaven and earth. The priest was to demonstrate the privileged relationship of being committed to God. And also to express the beauty of God because the priest had to be without blemish. Because the priest was supposed to be an expression of the beauty of God. So we can understand what a priest was supposed to be. So that's why Christ took it all back. Bam. He took it. 
He said, now nah, you got to be disciples. No, you're going to be disciples. But the Quran, but it says in 1 Peter chapter 2, you were chosen generation of royal priests. And you got to come into that. You got to come into that. You got to be developed into that. But how are you going to be developed into that image unless you're beholding the glory of the standard of the image, which is the Lord Jesus Christ? If you're in the old covenant, you ain't in no priest. If you keep in Sabbath days and new ones, you ain't in no priest, priesthood at all. Sabbath days and new ones, you're not in no priesthood. You confuse, you veiled. You're not joined to God. You don't have the spirit yet. But you can seek it and gain it. The priests were meant to be beautiful and comely, being joined to God, being connected to God. They were the connection between the earthly and heavenly, manifesting the will of God and the divine nature to the people. The priests were to direct the people into the holiness, into the perfect love of God, and uprightness and integrity and wisdom and instruction, and to give the sense of what it is to be loving, what it is to be a people, and what it is to walk with God. That was the office of the priesthood. What is written of the priest? The priest's lips should keep knowledge, and they should seek the law of God at his mouth. For the priest was a minister of the divine service, an active mediator between him that is invisible to mankind to show man how to live life and what actions to take to live in harmony with God. So what you see in, is the consolidation of those of, of the divine services and the consolidation of the monarchy and the consolidation of the rulership and the power, all that in Christ. Now the priest had to bow. Because they were taken out of power. Yeah. They had to bow because they were taken out of power. And brought what? Into service. And many men are angry because they're taken out of power and brought into service. They want to be served because the demonic world, the fallen nature of man, he has a sense of entitlement. And you should serve me because I know. No, no, no. You're supposed to serve because you know. See, Christ served because he knew. So you're supposed to serve because you know. With all the years of education that a doctor has, it's an education to bring him into service. With all the years of education in the Bible, it's to bring you into being a servant of God. To show the will of God to the people. That's what the years of education and service is to bring you into actually being a true brother. Yeah, a true son of God. A true servant. A true husband, a true friend, a true ambassador is to bring you into the service. Now, let's step back over here. For Melchizedek, king of Salem, priest of the Most High God, who met Abraham returning from the store of the king and blessed Abraham, because Abraham was returning from a move of righteousness where he went to war to deliver Lot from the wicked kings. So God met him after he tried and sacrificed his life to save and rescue another righteous man. When he stood up for what was right and put his life on the line with his 318 men, that is when Melchizedek met him. So you see, when you met, God meets you when you rejoice to work righteousness. Abraham was returning from a work of righteousness and that's when Melchizedek met him. That's when God met him because he was in the righteousness. That's how you're going to meet God in your life. Live the life of righteousness and love and care. He went to rescue Lot. And God met him. And God delivered the enemies into his hands. Because he was in communication with God all the time. Now, Hebrews chapter 7, verse 12. For the priesthood being chained is made of necessity a change also of the law. For he of whom these things are spoken pertaineth to another tribe of which no man gave attendance at the altar. For it is evidence, evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah of which tribe Moses spake nothing concerning priesthood. So when the Levitical priesthood was established, it spake, Moses spake nothing concerning the Levitical priesthood being succeeded and taken over and being abolished at any time by Judah. By who? It was not abolished by a man of Judah. It was abolished by the king of Judah. 
It was abolished by the Lord Jesus Christ who came, who was Judah. So it, it is incorrect to say the Judites took over the priesthood. No, no, no. Christ took over the priesthood. Is it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah because he's the one that's controlling the priesthood and every knee is bowing to him. All Judah bows to him. All Benjamin bows to him. All Levi, Simeon, Gad, Naphtali, Asher, Issachar, Reuben, Manasseh, everyone bows to his service and must come into the obedience of his priesthood. Man ain't controlling this anymore because man in the priesthood and the kingship abused the people. So now they got to submit to the king, to the king's way. And this, and it is yet far more evident for that after the similitude of Melchizedek, there ariseth another priest. It don't say there ariseth the same priest. There ariseth another priest. So for men to say that Melchizedek that met Abraham was Jesus Christ, you're not reading these scriptures correctly. You're not discerning what is revealed. See, because it's revealed that Christ was another priest, not the same priest. Melchizedek was a priest of the Most High God. Jesus Christ is the high priest of the Most High God. Okay. Again, like I said, like I witnessed, Melchizedek was an angel that came down out of heaven to bless Abraham that had the promises. That's just like how Jesus Christ came out of heaven to bless us that had the promises. But Christ, when he came, he was made of the seed of Abraham because that's how he said he was going to come. Made of a woman made under the law by the virgin birth. That's how it said he was going to come. But when Jacob was blessed, the angel blessed him. When Abraham was blessed, the angel blessed him because the blessing is coming by the commandment of the Father. So, so let me slow down for a second. What is the sum of all this? The sum of this is to show you that Christ only came to love you. Christ came to bless you. And since you are partakers of these precious promises, now you got to cleanse yourself from all filthiness of the flesh and of the spirit and perfect wholeness in the fear of God. It's a no chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous, but afterward it yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness to them that are exercised thereby. You have to be exercised in the chastening. So though you bless, you're still being corrected. Though you bless God said, lest there be any fornicator or profane person is Esau who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. Though you bless, don't sell your birthright. Don't value the lust of the world, the lust of the eye, or the pride of this life. Make sure your highest priority is not gain and getting. Make sure your highest priority is the gospel of Christ. And make sure everything is adjusted to the proper priorities of you seeking the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness. Because Abraham became very prosperous and God made him rich. But his priorities were set and he let God add to him. It says seek the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness and all things were added to him. And when it's added to you, then you still can attend to the Lord without distraction. So we can be clear. And it is far more evident that after the similitude of Melchizedek there ariseth another priest, not the same priest, and who is made not after the law of a carnal commandment, but after the power of an endless life. For he testifieth, thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek, because God ordered that you be blessed. Hear it now, saints, for there is verily a disannulling of the commandment going before, for the weakness and unprofitableness thereof. So the whole entire Levitical priesthood was disannulled. Can we read the word? Disannulled, saints. To cause something to end and no longer produce a certain effect. So if you're operating on the Sabbath days, new moons, or any of those carnal ordinances, because the next chapter shows you that he took away the first to establish the second. He abolished the first to establish, to cause, to be widely known and accepted and to put on a permanent basis the second covenant so we can be clear meaning so we can see and understand what the Lord is doing so when you're reading in, in the disannulling of the commandment it goes on to show you not only was the Levitical priesthood disannulled the whole entire old covenant was abolished 
it decayeth and waxeth forth. It said he taketh away the first covenant to establish the second. See, two covenants are not being established at the same time. One was taken away, one is established. Hebrews 8, Hebrews 10, it says this is the new covenant because the time that we're in is a time of the new covenant. The, the king, our Lord Jesus Christ, his profession was to establish the new covenant. Will man obey the teachings that he established in his profession? Okay. There's verily a disannulling of the commandment going before. This enough to cause something to end and no longer produce a certain effect. To stop from being effective or valid. To destroy the force and effectiveness and validity of. To strike down for deletion. To leave. To leave and never return to. So to disannul means to leave and to never return to. The old Levitical priesthood of sacrificing blood of bulls and goats and ashes of an heifer. It's been left and we're never returning to it. Are we hearing the forerunner? Are we hearing the judge? Are we hearing the king of kings and lord of lords? But I want to go to Ezekiel. You need to hear the judge. I want to go to Exodus. You need to hear the judge. Because that is how the Pharisees and the Sadducees in Israel it said they stumbled at the stumbling stone. They went back to the Mosaic law and didn't hear the judge that concluded, that decided on all those matters. Sacrificing offerings and offerings for sins which are offered by the law, thou wouldest not. God ended that. And burnt offerings for sins, God said he had no pleasure. He took away the first to establish the second. Hebrews chapter 10. Start from verse 8. Look on down. New and living way. Why? Because God wants you to know that you're living in the blessing. Living in the blessing. So he left to leave and to never return to. So when you read in Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 16. Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 16. It shall come to pass. When ye, shall be, when ye be multiplied and increased in the land in those days, saith the Lord, they shall say no more the ark of the covenant of the Lord, neither shall it come to mind, neither shall they remember it, neither shall they visit it, neither shall that be done anymore. So since the ark of the covenant is not covenant coming to mind, the two tables of stone that was in the ark of the covenant, that didn't come to mind. What else is not coming to mind? Aaron's rod that budded, that confirmed him and confirmed the Levitical priesthood and confirmed um, the high priesthood of Aaron, that didn't come into mind either. The showbread, the manna, that didn't come into mind because Christ is the man that came down from heaven. The forerunner is the him that came from the prize that preceded a new development. The new development is the new heaven, the new earth, which was requiring new creatures, which is requiring a new you. Which is requiring a new and living way. And saints, it's happening before our eyes. Now, let's finish reading this right here. God is the one that commanded the blessing. He commanded you be forgiven. He commanded that Christ in Acts chapter 5 to give repentance to Israel, forgiveness of sins, regeneration, washing, and renewing of the Holy Ghost. This is only by the blood of the Lamb because of the ministry of the high priest after the order of Melchizedek. The order of Melchizedek is the order to bless you. To take them from underneath the works of the law. Take them from underneath the curse. So if you're under the works of the law, you're still under the curse. You did not accept the blessing of the order of Melchizedek. Okay. Christ came to redeem them from the curse of the law. Being made a curse for us. Okay. Hebrews chapter 7. So when God said in Hebrews 6, surely in blessing I will bless thee, you're living in a state of blessing. You're not living in the curse once you turn to Christ. You're not living in the curse once you believe the gospel. You're not living in those effects of that conduct and that behavior. You're living in the blessing. All right. Hebrews chapter 7. For there is verily a disannulling of the commandment going before, for the weakness and unprofitableness thereof. For the law made nothing perfect. It didn't bring you to spiritual maturity. 
It didn't bring you into the divine nature. It did not resurrect you. It said, but the bringing in of a better hope did, by the which we draw nigh unto God. So the drawing nigh unto God is coming to be resurrected, coming to be transformed, coming to be conformed to the image of the Son. Now you can draw nigh unto God because you don't have to fear. You don't got to worry. You don't have to be apprehensive. You can leave the anxiety. That's why God said you accepted in the beloved. You may not be accepted in another person's love, but you accept it in the love of Christ. <laughs> That's the place to be. Where was Abraham accepted? Where was Isaac accepted? Where was Jacob accepted? Where was Joseph accepted? Jake, Joseph was not even accepted in the brotherly love of his own brothers. They envied him. They were jealous that the Spirit of God was dealing with him. That he was born after the Spirit. And he was in spiritual fellowship. And he was, God was communicating with him through dreams. They hated him because he dreamed a dream. And they said they could not speak peaceably with him. Why you can't speak peaceably with your brother and God is speaking peaceably with him? In the still, why can't you speak peaceably? Because Satan can move you and trigger people to envy because they feel they're being left out. Brothers and sisters, you're not being left out of anybody that's blessed in the church of Christ. You don't got to envy. Because a blessing in the church of Christ, in the gospel of Christ, is a spiritual blessing to benefit everybody. So you can bless those that are being blessed, man, and encourage them and support them and pray for them because your blessing is coming. <laughs> All right. For, for and in as much as not without an oath, he was made priest. For those priests were made, those priests were made without an oath, but this with an oath by him that said unto him, The Lord swear and will not repent, thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Look at how many times it's being repeated because God wants to show you that the blessing is sure it's not going to change. Your sin, your shortcomings is not going to change. All you got to do is repent. But God ain't changing his mind about the blessing. Don't throw it away. Don't throw away the love. Don't throw away the favor. By what? By being impatient. Okay. By so much was Jesus made a surety of a better testament. The New Testament is a better testament. The New Testament is the final testament. There's some lies. See, there's a lying teacher in this world that the Quran is the last testament. That is an absolute lie. The whole entire book of Quran is false teaching. That is not the way to eternal life. Jesus Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. That is it. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. He is the prophet that everyone must hear if they want to have the resurrection and experience the restitution of all things which shall come from the presence of the Lord. Okay. And they truly were many priests because they were not suffered to continue by reason of death. But this man, because he continued forever, hath an unchangeable priesthood. With which man? This man, Christ Jesus. Because he continued forever, he has an unchangeable priesthood. So the love ain't changing. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights with whom there is no variableness nor shadow of turning. Of God's will he begot you with the word of truth that you may be a kind of first fruit of his creatures. Saints, the reason why I always keep showing you the verses, because I'm showing you that your love, the word of God, is in support of your blessing. It's written in the volume of the book to confirm the promises made unto you. And as God sent Melchizedek, an angel out of heaven, to bless Abraham that had the promises, so Jesus Christ, our Lord, was sent to bless us because we are the children of promise. And since we're the children of promise, what did God do? He brought us from being born after the flesh to being born after the spirit, to being people of love, of faith, of the new covenant, of the new and living way. Wherefore, he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. So Christ is only living 
and ever lives to make intercession for you. If nobody won't speak up for you, remember Jesus is speaking up for you. Got somebody, you got somebody on your side. You got somebody on your side. If no one don't speak up for you, if no one makes intercession, if no one's at your bedside, if no one visits you when you're sick, remember the Lord is visiting you when you're sick. If when you're down like Elijah was down, and he saw you, it felt like he failed, remember the Lord had the angel come and touch him, to encourage him, and to feed him, and give him drink, and to show him it's all going to work together for the good. Remember the touch of God. For such an high priest became us who is holy and harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners, made higher than the heavens, who needeth not daily as those high priests to offer sacrifices. So if a man said he was a high priest, he's supposed to be offering sacrifices. Period. Because if you are a high priest, according to the old covenant, you're supposed to be offering sacrifices. You ain't got no temple. You ain't got no holy of holies. This is all confusion and darkness and false teaching from men that did not learn Christ properly. That they learned that they were Israelites and the first thing they did is what Christ told you not to do. They took the chief seats. They exalted themselves. They said, they, they said, no man taketh this honor to himself. Some men said they was Andrew and some men said they were generals and some men said they were John the Revelator and some men said they were... What is a confusion? Why don't they say they were disciples of Christ? Because men were deceived, they didn't see enough honor in being a disciple of Christ. They didn't see enough honor in being a son of God. They had to add titles to themselves. And that is why it says in the book of Job, if I will give flattering titles unto men, God would take me away. Men ain't got these titles now. Man is in the trial of their faith. And when the apostles and prophets operated upon this earth, they didn't operate in the title. Of the pride that man walks into this day. Those titles was obligations and responsibilities that they were aware of. And what did, he, what did Paul say? Woe unto me if I preach not the gospel. If he did not obey the full obligations of the apostleship he was in, he knew, man, there was a woe unto him. So it was a place of service to God and to the people. It was not a means of what? Paul said, I seek not yours, but you. He said, what is, my, what is my reward? What is this distinction? He said, I'm preaching the gospel without charge that I abuse not my power in the gospel. This is not for filthy lucre. I'm not after your money. I'm, I'm here to provoke you to loving God. And by love, we can serve one another. But this was not about the people's resources about taking their wealth to become wealthy it's about showing them their wealth in the kingdom of heaven let them realize the blessing that God did in Christ who needeth not dearly as those high priests to offer up sacrifices first for his own sins and then for the people for this he did once when he offered up himself for the Lord maketh men high priests which have infirmity but the word of the oath which was since the law maketh the son who was consecrated forevermore. So this is what we got to see. Again in review. Christ did this as a high priest after the order of Melchizedek. Because God was showing you I sent you a king to bless you. To rule over you in blessing and in love and in kindness and in peace and in grace and in regeneration and in washing. Yet a king going to correct you. But gently. He's holy and he's harmless. He's separate from sinners, meaning I'm not cruel like man. I'm not mean like man. I'm not forceful like man. As Paul said, I beseech you by the meekness and gentleness of Christ because he was showing that he was in the service of the high priest. He was in the service of his majesty. That's why Hebrews 8 and 1, Now the things which we have spoken, this is a sum. We have such an high priest who is set on the right hand of the throne of the majesty in the heavens. So Christ is set on the right hand of the throne of the majesty in the heavens. This is the sum, the summary of the chief points and thoughts. 
the description of the most important information. The final part of a series of statements of facts intended to establish clarity and truth and conclusions and final decisions that have been formed after a set period of thought and reasoning. See, God is giving you the conclusion of thoughts. After the periods of thoughts and reason, that's why Hebrews is towards the end of the New Testament. Because it's a series of thoughts. Now God is giving you the conclusion. The conclusion, it tells you in Hebrews 8, verse 6, But now hath he obtained a more excellent ministry, by how much also he is the mediator of a better covenant, which was established upon better promises, for the first covenant had been faultless, then should no place have been sought for the second. For finding fault with them, he saith, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. It's repeating it because it's showing you the day came. We in the day. The day happened approximately 2,000 years ago. Now when you jump down to verse 10, for this is the covenant I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their minds and write them in their hearts, and I will be to them a God, and they shall be to me a people, and they shall not teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for all shall know me from the least unto the greatest. And in them knowing the Lord, what God is showing you that they're going to recognize who the Lord is. They're going to recognize who the king is. Because they're going to be brought into the sight of who is the ruler. Who is the majesty set at the right hand of the throne in the heavens. Who is sitting on the side of God. Who has the power. Who has the authority. And who do you owe your allegiance to. Because the confusion upon the earth is that man did not know who his allegiance should be to. It was the false prophets, it was the false teachers, it was the men that set up kings, but not by God. They set themselves up, and God said, I didn't know nothing, of, I had nothing to do with it. So what happened in one west, with the Masha being set up as king, because that was done from the 80s. That's you, brother, he'd been set up as king. God is the one that revealed that it was all sin. In 1994, it was all wickedness that Christ was king. He brought men into the conviction of things that they already agreed with. Because now, the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it first begin in us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel, that obey not the service of the majesty of the king, our Lord Jesus Christ? Because he's the king of righteousness, he's the king of peace. Saints, there's no hostility. There's a cessation of hostility. There's a freedom from oppressive thoughts and feelings. There's no fear in love. Perfect love. Perfect love. Jesus Christ is love. There's only one thing that is sure and steadfast is the love of a parent and a child. Even though the child has to be reformed and make changes for the better. What's sure is the love of God. What's sure is the love of the parent. And God don't want nobody to have an evil conscience about him. But many people that were hurt have adventured upon teaching the Bible. You can't teach the Bible and you hurt. Because you're going to put out a hurt message. You're going to make people think that God is out to hurt them. And God is not out to hurt them. God is out to deliver man from being hurt. And God is out to heal their hurt. And God is out to take down everybody that's hurting all the people. He's giving people time. To stop hurting other people. He said, for they shall not hurt or destroy in all my holy mountain. Because God is showing you, I'm going to take care of all your hurt. Come to me with your hurt. Come to him with your pain. And know that Jesus Christ has power to heal you. He created the heavens and the earth. Healing is easy for him. It ain't a hard issue. He just speak the word and you heal. So may the Lord speak the word of healing in your life. And remember saying there's no evil. We cannot, nobody can have an evil conscience towards God. God is only there for your good. Only there for your good. Christ being become a high priest of good things to come. Showing you it's all about your good. So enjoy. Your time upon earth. It's about your good. Onward to eternal life. Good. Good news. Good tidings. Good gospel, 
good God, good Father, good Shepherd. It's about your good. The love of Christ, it says it casteth out all fear. That's why God sent the king in his name, in his majesty, after the order of Melchizedek, after the order of them, bless the children of promise. And when the angel came to bless Jacob, because it was to confirm the promises that was made to Abraham. So when Christ came to bless Israel, it was to confirm the promises made to Abraham. When Christ came to bless us, it's to confirm the promises, because we in the time of promise. When the time of promise drew nigh, God is the one, what happened to Moses? It said it came into his heart to visit his brethren, to be kind to his people, to, to, what a, to love one another with a pure heart fervently because the time of the promise, in the promise is a spirit. That's why I said in Romans that we might receive the promise of the spirit through faith. In the promise there is a spirit. And in that spirit, that is where there's a reviving, there's a resuscitation, there's a resurrection, because love has resurrected you. Love has redeemed you. Love is keeping you. Love is teaching you. Love is protecting you. Love is defending you. And the love of God is upon the throne. The access. How is the access? It's by faith. Abraham believed God, and it was accounted unto him for righteousness. And that's where the transformation begins. When you believe. And take your time, saints. Grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Because he's bringing you, he's advancing you. The forerunner created and started the development in bringing many sons unto glory. The king came to bring you. So the forerunner is the shepherd. And behind the shepherd, there's a sheep. All right now. So who you following? Follow him into your blessings. Follow him into your deliverance. Follow him into your resurrection. Follow him into deeper faith, deeper virtue, into miracles, into kindness, into compassion, into pity, into virtue. Continue saints to follow him. I thank you for the time that we spent together. I say grace and peace to all you brothers and sisters. And as my brother Elazai says, Living in the blessings. Live in the blessings. Because God raised up his son Jesus, sent him to bless you. And him sending Jesus Christ to bless you, remember it says in 1 Corinthians 10, the cup of blessings which we bless. So Christ has taken out of your hand the cup of trembling. You ain't going to drink it no more. Now you're drinking the cup of blessings. So saints share the cup of blessings with each other. The cup, and if a brother be overtaken in the fault, ye which are spiritual, restore him in the spirit of meekness, consider your, considering yourself, lest you also be tempted. Bear one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law. So live the reality of the law of Christ, because the law of Christ also deals with recovering of your brothers. Recover them, restore them, renew them, forgive them, wash them, regenerate them, help each other. As the Spirit helpeth our infirmities, may we as brothers and sisters help each other to overcome the infirmities that we may grow up unto him in all things, which is the head, even Christ, a people of divine love, zealous of good works, full of the fruits of the spirits, increasing in the knowledge of God, and full of goodness, able also to admonish one another. Saints be blessed. Saints be loved. Saints be conscious. Saints be risen. Saints, be upright. Saints, be happy. Be happy this year. Happy art thou, O Israel, who is like unto thee. And we're going to step out on that right there. Be happy. Be happy. Deuteronomy, we've got to go into the ancient records. 32 verse 29. Happy art thou, O Israel, who is like unto thee. O people saved by the Lord, the shield of thy help, and who is the sword of thy excellency? And thy enemies shall be found liars unto thee, and thou shalt tread upon their high places, because their high places put out false teachings. Their high places put out sophisticated words to confuse you about you are loved. 
by God. The high places put out false teaching to confuse mankind of their rights and their love and their favor that's given to them by God. And the reason why they targeted you, Israel, because you're supposed to stand up for what is right before anybody else. That's why God gave you his spirit and the residue of the spirit is in you to stand up for what is right. To so stand up for love, stand up for meekness, stand up for gentleness, and above all, stand up for the love of God. Stand up for man escaping the corruption that's in this world through lust. You can't just speak about the love of the world that it's talking about. Because the love of the world is it, it, telling you to let everything continue and agree. That ain't what God is talking about. The love of God is causing us to escape the corruption that's in this world. The love of God delivered us from this present evil world. That's what God said. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. Happy art thou, O Israel. Saints be happy. Live the happiness and you're saved by hope. You're destined to blessing. You have a cup of blessing, drink up. Drink on and drink it all. Grace and peace. See, saints, what must be understood? God did not want man to be deceived anymore about the love of God. What kind of person would bless you? A person that loves you. Because God wants man to know that they're loved by him. Like a 